I must start by saying that, uh, contrary to uh, what I jokingly uh, answered to Pedro Pinto's uh, uh, remark last week, when he said, I, uh, when he saw, saw us in the Biblioteca Nacional in what he considered an early stage of the work, he said, oh, so this is going to be a work in progress. To which I said, no, no, it's going to be final work and definitive conclusions. But of course, this, this is not. Uh, final word, uh, word, definitive conclusions, not even working process. This is an embryo, an idea, and a sampling, as the title uh, very carefully already anticipated two months ago. Um, so this is why, uh, consider that as what it is, and this is why I thought it would be uh, useful to bring this to you today. Uh, the first uh, um, basic idea was to gather someone, uh, me, uh, who had some experience in working with uh, the men in Alcabasa from my previous uh, life when I had time to do research. Uh, with these men uh, in their work as judge delegates and uh, executives of papal sentences, i.e. as active members of the juridical community in the Kingdom of Portugal uh, at the turn of the uh, century, 12th century, of course. With uh, combine this with the expertise of an art historian, uh, Alessandra Pilota, Maria Alessandra Pilota, who specializes in the illumination of legal manuscripts, and with the diplomatic and art eye of Hugo Crespo, who, although he has a wide range of interests, uh, has a special eye for the detail. And we try to combine these skills uh, with the analysis of the legal manuscripts of the Fundo de Alcobas of the Biblioteca Nacional, uh, which is a few of the uh, remaining archives that have uh, complete legal works uh, that still uh, survive. We hoped to see in the preserved manuscript traces, uh, uh, in, uh, sorry, in the preserved manuscript traces of use or at least of some uh, utility for the practical work of the man who was so prominently used as legal experts in those specific years, and we tried to see if the technical approach within commas, of handwriting, mise en page, and illuminations could shed some more light on the tradition of the legal manuscript materials kept in the library of 12th, 13th century, monastic library of Alcabas. I have to here make a break to thank Adelaide, who has been uh, fundamental and instrumental in the visit she made to us and the big help she gave us without um, um, uh, generously as she always does. And so our thanks here to her who enlightens us in some of the more traditional traditions of Alcobas. We were therefore looking for manuscripts from the 12th and 13th century which could represent the materials at hand for those involved in the cases and see if we could connect them with the men we know worked there and to their use of the manuscripts. Behind us, and in what concerns the library of Alcobas and its holdings, the works of Ibsaias de Rosa Pereira, the catalogue of the Alcoba census, and scattered articles and references, as in Kutner and Charles Durban, and obviously in García García, and then in a more, uh, 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 in a smaller way, Irish de Nascimento and Saul uh, uh, Gomes. Uh, so, uh, difficult choices um, had to be done, and the time we have is short, divided by three, is much shorter. We will therefore give you a brief overview of the work we did. First, we'll look at uh, the man, then we'll look at the legal manuscripts, and then we'll try to finish with some finishing clues, or should I say, with some uh, initial remarks to um, try and debate what we found and what we uh, want. Let's try, let's start with the man. Uh, every student of Innocent III who has read Tillman's book on Innocent uh, III, of course, has heard about the alleged preference of this pope for Cistercians as the mediums, the mediators, who best prepared ecclesiastics for the implementation of his reforms. Of course, Innocent III, being a, a theologian himself and um, um, with some knowledge of law, might have been somewhat disheartened in his preference by the slight drawback derived from the fact that the Carta Caritatis explicitly forbade monks from wandering outside the monastery. That if the example of uh, one of the most famous of its founder's father, Bernard, was anything to go by, then surely Innocent III couldn't have hesitated much when considering Cistercians for the role of judge de delegates and commissioners, arbiters, uh, or uh, perhaps even legates. Alcobasa was a Cistercian house founded by royal will in 1150, 
on the aftermath of the conquest of Lisbon and surely bears evidence of this considerable legal activity and expertise during the pontificate of Innocent III and beyond. Harsh as the rule might have been in theory, and even if we do have plenty of evidence that Alcobasa was also in an isolated place and with very relevant impact in the landscape around it, space, in rural and dominial terms, a considerable part of its white mines were not confined to the walls of the convent, even if they weren't dressed in white probably, or its lands, they were actively involved in the proceedings of law and played a major role in some of the most important cases of the turn of the century, acting on behalf of the monastery, on behalf of the Pope, and on behalf of the King. Alcobasa, as I said, was a royal foundation. The abbots of Alcobasa, during the reigns of the first four kings of Portugal, have been fundamental in many aspects. Alcobasa was to be the chosen place of burial for Alfonso II, Sancho II, and Alfonso III, which is saying already a lot. But the importance near the kings uh, is emphasized also in kings previous to Alfonso II, since we know that Sancho I's closest to, closeness to Cistercian abbots and uh, houses, uh, he makes uh, his, uh, the abbot of Alcobasa one of his will executors in his times of trial during the 1210-1211 uh, period with whom he's uh, in fighting uh, with all his nobility. And the uh, abbot of Alcobasa never seems to leave his side. He's one of the will executors and he's one of the ones who is always faithful to Sancho I, who also grants extensive grants not only to Alcobasa, or surely to Alcobasa, inclusively in uh, donating, uh, I don't know with which authority, one monastery, Sesa, to the abbot of Alcobasa and in inserting all its belongings into Alcobasa. So uh, the evidence we have as legal experts for these men is uh, uh, mainly concentrates, and uh, you will see that from the um, from the uh, handouts that uh, uh, we passed to you, mainly concentrates in a certain uh, time. Um, in order to express visually and save time and words, I hope, the importance of this man at this time, I tried to translate it not only into the tables you have, but through mostly into the graphics, uh, which are the, uh, the quantitative results of the evaluation of their role as papal appointees and judge de judges delegate and executors, uh, but mainly uh, uh, we know them better because of uh, uh, collecting evidence for a witness inquiries, two of them uh, explain. If you look at the graphics in the handout, two facts become apparent. One, the almost uh, monopoly of they have in the brief period of uh, 1198 and uh, 1203, uh, um, and their almost total disappearance after that, their almost irrelevance as papal delegates during Honorius III and uh, uh, further on. Of course, like most graphics, these need contextualization. The reason for Alcobasa's protagonism, as well as for the quantity of times they were nominated as papal judges during the years 1989, 90, I'm sorry, 1198, 1199 has basically two names. One is Pedro Soares, the persecuted senile bishop of Coimbra, who at this time was not that senile, who in Rome and in exile was promoting a serious campaign near the papal curious, curia to contest the privileges of the regular canons of Santa Cruz de Coimbra. And the second is named the unending quarrels between Santa Cruz de Coimbra and uh, uh, the uh, episcopacy of uh, Coimbra which had their climax precisely in those years, was Innocent III didn't pass his final sentence, uh, a first final sentence in uh, 1203, a cum polim, and a second final sentence of 1206, another cum polim, this time definitively. Uh, the Alcabasa men's role in this process, in their connection to, with the Sea of Coimbra, the King and Santa Cruz, is almost exclusively uh, uh, bonded with these quarrels. Through the extravagant quantity of letters issued by Rome commissioning the Cistercians of Alcobasa to pass sentence on small topics that then compose a big case with lots of uh, items, and then finally in the years 1200-1201, they were commissioned 
to raise an inquiry to witnesses who would inform this final sentence. And through this process, we are introduced into a lively and extravagantly politicized world, the world of the Cistercians of Alcobasa and the ways in which they used their legal role as a form of influence, but also as mediators, I didn't know this role, uh, in a problematic cause for their own peace. As usual, we take the biggest and most uh, relevance of uh, our information uh, from the inquiries. There are two of these, one made by the judge delegates of Alcobasa, and another one made by the judge delegates which informed what was the pre-final sentence. And those are already non-Portuguese, and the Pope not ended up by nominated non-Portuguese uh, judge delegates saying they would have to be non-Portuguese, the Zamoran uh, uh, clique is starting to be imposed. They will very soon be almost monopolizing themselves, the Portuguese cases. But in this instance, the final uh, sentence of 1206 uh, uh, would be uh, uh, informed by an inquiry led by these judge delegates outside Portugal. And this was because precisely these uh, uh, judge delegates of Alcobasa, in this case, were immediately contested uh, from the inquiries, the first inquiries, uh, 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 asked uh, to these uh, judge delegates, we are told that the letters of commission, which were special letters of commission that already said they could not be inhibited, so they could not be uh, uh, contested, uh, but they were brought to uh, Portugal by, uh, uh, suspiciously enough, the Dean of Coimbra, who was a very big operator. He was the son of Julian Pais, and uh, uh, I'm not going to enter into him because he's in the Sea of, uh, of Coimbra. But he, so the Dean of Coimbra, because the bishop was in exile, had been thrown away uh, uh, from Portugal, by the king who had been a little bit on the tough side of, uh, to the bishop, the dean brings the commission letters to the arbiters in Alcobasa. They come to Alcobasa, they're read in Alcobasa out loud, and the Alcobasa men call to the Cistercian monastery all the other uh, <coughs> advocates of the cause, the one from Santa Cruz and the one from uh, uh, Coimbra, who happens to be the dean, the same dean that brought the commission letters for the judges. So it's no wonder if Master Martin, as he's called, the, the advocate of Santa Cruz, comes and contests the whole process and says, these are not, uh, these are partial judges, this has to be immediately stopped. And of course, they know, they're, they know their home, they've done their homework, so they go and say, mm, are you contesting just one of the items in question or all of them in uh, uh, jointly? And they start debating, and they keep on debating. And uh, what we know uh, next is that um, the people in Alcobasa have uh, uh, called the uh, have uh, asked the king. Part of the witnesses, of course, said the people in Alcobasa asked the king to be a judge himself. And the other part says the king wanted to be a judge in this cause and wanted to interfere because they couldn't get away with it. And the king asks this man, can I be a judge in this cause? He's answered, no, you can be an assessor. And he says, what is an assessor? And so many witnesses tell this. And so you see this sort of interference of something which is working. What is an assessor? And they say, well, an assessor is a sort of arbiter. You can't judge, but you can pile up evidence. And in the end, he says, then, if I can't be judge, I want, who does he want? The priors of the collegiate church of Costa and Guimarães, who are very close together and they were very influential. So you can see the whole net, uh, 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 not of mobile phones, but a whole <laughs> real, real net of people who actually know where they stand and nobody thinks they are ingenuous in this. And the people in Alcobasa pass their their monastery as the place where these inquiries were being done to the royal curia. <coughs> and in the meantime, they run to, uh, um, uh, they, they finish the process, they go to Rome, 
and together with the men, uh, and of course, it's not the men of Alcobasa who take the result of the report of these in witness inquiries on, on this problem, is uh, this master of Calatrava that shows up in Rome with the reports. And at the same time, two uh, uh, proctors of, um, of uh, Santa Cruz who allegedly had uh, been on the way running the, all their way to Rome until then show up also. And they say, this is a false. This man is a false. He's not even a Cistercian. So they denounce him, and they present royal letters and another uh, pile of royal privileges that prove the point to, um, to, um, to uh, the Pope uh, that Santa Cruz Monastery was right. And this is when a big dramatic thing is told to us by a relative quantity of, of witnesses, which made me think I know these are made up, uh, they shouldn't be made up, but I, we know this is sort of rearranged. But how many people were in the, royal, in, in the papal consistory at the time? They all say, we were there, we saw this guy arriving with the document, we saw the judge delegates of Coimbra, and we saw the Pope claiming to the judge delegates of, uh, of uh, Santa Cruz, this is a lie, you're lying, I'm not taking any of these documents, I'm fed up with this. And then they started talking, and the Pope says, shut up! And, you can <laughs> and uh, the quantity of witnesses that repeat this same story is quite impressive on both sides. This ends, of course, in the process going backwards again, and then finally delivered to uh, the uh, Zamoran and uh, um, Forense and Salamanca uh, judges, who were deemed a little bit more... Uh, 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 more um, more um, thank you. This passion. In all of this, um, we can see them operating. We have the uh, litis contestatio. We have the letters that are inhibiting any more commissions. We have all the legal expertise um, uh, in place, and we see them operate. But we have no none whatsoever document with references like the sermons of Anthony or like the uh, case uh, uh, being deployed for the nuns of Lord Vaughan. We, we do not have any um, uh, legal quotation in these processes. We have witness inquiries, we have the letters of commission, we don't have sentences passed except by the Pope and even those they do make a good history of what happened, and so we can reconstitute, reconstitute the whole thing. But nothing is actually uh, what one might expect, which is, uh, thank God, they're quoting a legal uh, book, which actually exists in Alcobasa. So, uh, 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 although it's no wonder that uh, um, their library was well endowed in legal uh, books, um, they're not uh, exactly what we were, um, they didn't provide, at, at least until now, any evidence of any other usage apart from the fact that they knew their business. Uh, but there is no direct quotation, and the books we have do not give us um, any, uh, do not interfere with the other sphere, although it is possible to say a lot of things about the production and about how uh, Alcobasa was actively working in their um, uh, production in these early days. And so, um, in order not to waste any more time, I pass on to our next speaker. Sorry for taking too long. Okay, well, uh, from the Abbey of Alcobasa for the uh, 12th and uh, 13th centuries, uh, is here to have a prayer on survival, working on surviving canon law books. Uh, he mentions Alcobasensis 144, 173, 201, 365, and 381. So, they contain legal things such as papal decretals collected by canon lawyers in this period, their comments or glossi, and special collections of papal decrees relevant to the community of Alcobasa. But let's start with uh, this um, Alcobacensis 265, which is an incomplete copy of Burkhardt's of Worms Decretum, whose original was finished by 1023. Uh, 
Although not dated, the manuscript has a copy form with the precise indication that it was copied in Alcabasta's scriptorium uh, during the government of Abbott and the uh, and probably uh, between the 17th and the 18th of the uh, 12th century. A large and deluxe in volume, it is unfortunately incomplete. The choir spanning from the 1st to the uh, 23rd having disappeared. Such a big format is very similar to the large in folium typical of legal collections like Gratian's Decretum uh, of circa 1150, the famous canonical collection that was compiled more than a hundred years after the one that we are dealing with. Considering that Burkhardt's collection was in a certain way some, uh, supplanted by Gratian's work, it is puzzling that the Abbot of Alcobasa would put in this occasion such great material and economic effort into the copying of this manuscript, especially given its large format and sumptuous time-consuming illuminated dis display script, the, the capitulators. This can perhaps be explained by the exhaustive and comprehensive character of Alcobasa's library canon law holdings and the ideal juridical library which uh, served as its model. Although the quality of the parchment used throughout can be considered of, uh, of a high standard, a number of choirs, mainly the original 28th, use pieces of parchment of lesser uh, with the uh, signs of the extremities of the animal, I mean, the, the shoulders. Uh, in the folding uh, process and in the composition of the choirs, this position of the membrane always follows Gregory's rule: <coughs> flesh facing flesh, hair facing hair. The pricking, or, uh, the, uh, that is the markings, which enable the setting of the uh, writing frame, was then in one single step, most probably with a sharp metallic pointer, slightly wedged shaped, of a compass, and without the help of a ruler, and using the inner margin of the wire as a guide traversing the first folio of each choir through to the last, which was always the fourth. It's, it's made of uh, quaternionis. Um, in one case, at least the 29th choir, two different sets of prickings were made, so that near the foreedge we can see two lines of prickings, one made from the first folio of the choir and the other from behind. This procedure of pricking the entire choir at once can be better observed in the third for, uh, uh, 34th gathering, where near the inner margin a double erroneous line of prickings can be seen. Uh, the same type of uh, pricking present in this manuscript is also observed in Alcobasensis 339 and 340, which contains Petrus uh, Comestor's Historic Scholastica in two volumes. <coughs> The ruling, unlike the pricking, which was done with the choirs closed, was then drawn with a dark pencil on each face of the, of the bifolios when open. Several hesitations, double ruling, and even corrections on the writing frame, as, as we can see here and here, do occur, especially in this last case, in conjunction with its alteration in the middle of the writing process. It makes me think that the ruling of a page in this uh, precise manuscript was made just before the copy uh, of the text itself. This can hardly be considered a normal procedure. Curiously, the first line of text of each page is always copied above the top line and not below it, as had become the norm precisely in this period, and using, uh, using it as frames. So you can see the first line in the, is always um, uh, above the top line. Uh, and this occurs in, uh, in other alcobacenses um, from the same period. Apart from flat color initials uh, after um, uh, alternating in green and red, a more complex illumination occurs in some chosen capitulares or this or display script, as you can see here. Um, Differing from the decoration of other juridical manuscripts copied in Alcobasta's script volume, the main feature is the use of a type of lacquered pigment mainly employed in the backgrounds, producing a glossy shimmering effect, as well as an untinted, in this case we consider the, the, the shellac untinted. The usual combination is a shellac background where a photomorphic letter is drawn in a dark brown with a fine brush is then decorated with the vibrant contrast of green and red, 
and finally it highlightens on top of, of the shark in a silvery grey and white tempera, um, <coughs> as we can see here. As evidence of the final stages of, the, of its production and quality control, we can see that all, the, all of the codex was thoroughly amended, first by adding the correct reading near the margins, outside the print area, both near the fore edge and close to the inner margin, in a smaller script, uh, probably by a legal expert or even a revisor, and then scraping off and correcting the text. In Alcobacensis uh, 173, we find a compilatio prima by Bernard of Pavia, a compilation of circa 1192, here preceded in this, in this precise manuscript by the 71 uh, can uh, canons of the Fourth Council of Legion, um, followed then by small, uh, some smaller texts containing several paper holes with important privileges to Alcobasa. Apart, uh, uh, apart from its decoration, which clearly belongs to a precise type used those years in Alcobasa's scriptorium, as Alexander Grota will show us, from the material point of view, <coughs> this manuscript, in my point of view, has little to do with others produced there in the same transitional period from the 12th to the 13th centuries, that is, in the heyday of our Eurisperiti. In fact, the printing procedure used in this manuscript left the same and absolutely perfect set of marks in all of the choirs, as if all the printing had been done at the same time. This can only happen if a special device, like a metallic frame, uh, uh, strategically uh, perforated, had been used. An innovation which may encompass the idea of some type of automation that would have permitted a serial production of manuscripts all with the same standard layout. Such mise en page occurs solely in the codex part, its main body, where the copilato prima was copied, since in the first choir, uh, which uh, contains the, the fourth Latin council, composed of five folios, has an altogether different printing system. The high quality and thinness, uh, about 0.15 millimeters, of the membrane used in this manuscript stands um, out as well, having almost the appearance and whiteness of vellum, making the flesh and hair sides of the parchment nearly indistinguishable from one another. When, on the question of script, major differences can be seen from the first choir in a small, compressed, and more angular traditional script with higher influence of Gothic minuscule elements to the rounder and more spaced Caroline minuscule that is used in the Compilato Prima, contrasting as well with the multitude of different hands that we can see in the final quaternions of this manuscript, with the heavy presence of more Gothic uh, minuscule traits. Considering all the material evidence gathered, I am more inclined to think that the bulk of this codex that is, the copying of its main text of the Copia de Prima, may not have been made in Alcobasta Scriptorium, but only its final stages of production, being complemented afterwards by relevant juridical texts of Portuguese community in our Scriptorium. And then passing to the Alcobasta 144, it takes from the second half of the 13th century and contains one of the primitive collections of papal decretals, apparently one who might have uh, come from England or of English tradition, because it doesn't uh, 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 resemble any other Alcobacensis uh, manuscript, with some important Portuguese editions. A manuscript that was poorly, if not erroneously, described in terms of its material prospectus by Charles Degen, who, although highlighted its, uh, its relevance, we are dealing with an in quarto, so a smaller uh, volume, written in full page, not the two columns certain uh, scribes, in a script, uh, in, a trans in a transitional script, and embellished um, with some plain colored initials in red and blue, and normally uh, slightly ornamented. The paleographical analysis of the ductus shows that it's very dissimilar compared to the Alcobasta script of the period, for instance, in the G with its, um, with its uh, case presents a final upper stroke. It is thus not a product of our scriptorium. Um, then I'm, I will pass to the, uh, the last one. Finally, the larger volume of the 381, 
with four of the five Tablationes Antiqua, might be considered the last draft of Altabas's juridical manuscript production in this Jewish-Politic Golden Age and the apogee of their political power and, and, and influence. In, it is an exceptional codex since its primitive woodboard binding is still in place. Judging from the traditional script used from Caroline Municipal to Gothic Textualis of a small module and then the glossary, which is even more minute, and the higher presence of Gothic script elements, we can conclude that this manuscript, composed of choirs made of five folios each, was copied in the first decades of the 14th century. Most revealing are the lower parts of some of the folios not covered with the heavy glossary which have precious annotations made by lead pencil and a, fer uh, a ferrous one, producing rusty brown traces, per uh, purposely uh, ephemeral in nature. The same rusty pencil is also responsible for some small curious scribbles, like a hand with six fingers or a goat's hand, indicating uh, long periods of intimate contact between our legal experts and the canonical codes which they needed to resolve such delicate and complex cases. So, um, my part of, uh, of, the, of the intervention uh, concern only one of the manuscripts that uh, we have studied in these two months. The reason is that uh, this manuscript, that is the Alcubasa 163, 73, sorry, is um, very useful to um, to show the methodolog methodological process uh, that um, that uh, are used by art historian to help uh, the knowledge of uh, the different uh, dynamic of production of manuscripts in some uh, monastic site. Uh, because we have also analyzed the manuscript Alcobasa 144 and the manuscript Alcobasa 365. Uh, these uh, two manuscripts, uh, the first one probably is uh, not made in Alcobasa because the decoration is very different from uh, all that is produced in the monastery. And uh, the second one uh, um, is uh, uh, sure made in Alcobasa. Uh, the um, Alcobasa 173 is a manuscript that uh, not present uh, some proof, objective proof of uh, appartenance uh, to the of production in Alcobasa. So we are not sure that this manuscript is produced in Alcobasa. And the analysis, stylistical analysis, it's very helpful to um, to connect this codex to uh, other manuscripts produced in the in the monastery. Uh, the decoration is a very simple and mise en page too, and it's very useful to the use of, of, of the lecture of the, of the manuscripts. And it's um, composed by a simple decorated initial uh, made with the brush, and it's very interesting to note in this, um, in this uh, initial E, that is the first uh, important initial of the manuscript, the use of gold. And uh, it's, very, it's very interesting because it means that the manuscript was considered important uh, also materially, uh, with the use of a, a very precious material. And uh, the part that is uh, more decorated in the manuscripts is the part that concerns the first uh, compilation of, of uh, legal text. Uh, that is the, the, the most important part. The first part, with the canons of the Fourth Lateran Council, don't present uh, any decoration. Uh, the, the part uh, also interesting in this decoration are the pen flourishing with decoration extension that you see in the body page of, uh, of this first page, and that are very, um, very typical and very special and present colors uh, like uh, red, orange, uh, ye orange uh, ye yellow orange, and, um, and this uh, motive, uh, decorated motive, very different. Cluster, floral motive here, and the motive like uh, also the tip of an arrow. <coughs> and this is, uh, this is very, very particular. 
In this uh, context, uh, we can I'll show you some other examples. This is an example of the mise en page and the use for, of, uh, uh, of this mise en page for the use and the lecture of the manuscripts. Uh, another <coughs> example. And, uh, other example with this monster that are like bird, bat, or like fish, is a hybrid monster. And uh, also with the uh, vegetal mountains, and we can go. So like this, like this, and it's very special. And this is the last one. Uh, this page has been uh, unfortunately cut. It. And uh, so um, the analysis of other manuscripts uh, conserved in Alcobasa uh, and um, permit to uh, connect this manuscript to other manuscripts produced in heaven. Uh, this manuscript is the Alcobasa 149 and is a manuscript with uh, some text about the Virgin Mary and uh, uh, this text have been connected with the Abbey of uh, the monastery from Aires de Nascimento and so uh, is uh, sure that uh, the text and the, the decoration have been made in Alcobasa. Uh, at this family, we can call this family, up, um, are also another manuscript, this one, the Alcobasa 185, and is another book very important and connected with the Cistercian Order because it contains the use of the Cistercian Order. It's a very <coughs> simple manuscript and this, um, unfortunately, a lot of the initials are damaged by use, probably. But it presents the same motif, pen flourished motif, that we have seen in the Alcobasa 173. And another manuscript is this one, is the rich one, are two volumes with the um, uh, Historia Scholastica of Petrus Comestor. Um, and it uh, presents also the same motif that are uh, made uh, after, perhaps after, the uh, big initial made uh, with brush. And it's very interesting in this uh, manuscript uh, to see that uh, perhaps are two different, uh, uh, two different artists uh, that work. One specialized in uh, the work of brush and the other in the work of pen. And um, uh, so uh, with this uh, very rapid uh, comparison, we can, uh, we can affirm that the decoration of the Alcobasa 173 uh, was made um, certainly in uh, the context of Alcobasa. Also, if uh, uh, some uh, paleographical analysis of the manuscripts, like Hugo had said before, uh, seems to, to show that the, the, the manuscript uh, perhaps has not been written in Alcobasa. And uh, this phenomenon is, uh, is, very, um, is not so strange because there was a lot of manuscripts that comes uh, in a site from another site and that receive the uh, decoration, illustration in another place uh, from the place where they was uh, made. Uh, so uh, I, I stop here and I think that uh, this manuscript is interesting to, to, to understand that uh, these, um, these artists uh, decorated all the manuscripts, not only uh, one typology, but different typology, with the same style and with the same, uh, the same uh, way. So just to uh, um, make the finishing touch, as I, said, as I promised, I apologize for having taken too long. We were very strict and uh, wrote three pages each, but of course our three pages go very um, um, uh, far away. Uh, it's like the delays of law, but in this case the delays of... Um, the only excuse is that we're three, but I would still like to add that in the middle of uh, these uh, uh, three manuscripts which, which we have so far, which we have seen uh, in uh, detail, the uh, Burkhardt, uh, the, um, uh, uh, what we call the 173 and the 381, 
uh, can be said to be a, a Kubasa production. And in their contents, we count, as we said, uh, not only the uh, canons of Fourth Lateran, uh, also um, the Compilatio Prima, the, all the Compilaciones between the first and the fourth, and uh, a lot of, um, of um, uh, copies of uh, treatles from uh, uh, Alexander III to Honorius III, which are basically either privileges to Alcobas of relevance, if you consider they were given in the 20s, uh, in the 1220s, when there were problems with uh, uh, the religious, or also uh, an interesting detail is that uh, the Alcobas 381 that has the compilatio, um, the, the four compilaciones, um, has a piece in the middle, very, very hidden away, uh, which is the super speculum, which, as everybody knows, is uh, a pool prohibiting ecclesiastics from uh, studying law. So it's interesting that it shows up in this context. It shows that um, they had some purpose. The other important thing is this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, codex, which we have analyzed, the 144, which Charles Duggan described in detail, uh, ascertaining that it's a collectio primitiva, so it's uh, not as a very use, a very normal thing. And it describes it to the family of the French and the Tortosa uh, collections. And uh, furthermore, it's not an inbred production, but it might have come with the first settlers of uh, uh, Alcobasa or being copied at uh, that time. And that one also has the canons of third lateral. So all this together, a production of these uh, early, uh, well, late 12th and uh, early 13th, shows a proliferation of these materials, which sort of combines with the work we know that these legal experts were uh, doing, uh, even if they shouldn't have done. This is a case in which we possess both. In the case of the regular canons and most of the seas, uh, we do not uh, possess anything but fragments that ended up in bindings, later bindings. We do know that they must have had it. And when we have wills, which fortunately we have for, a, for a secular uh, uh, clergy, we know much more of what they used, although we have no uh, remaining evidence. So um, on this tone, apologizing for taking too long, we finish. <laughs> Let's start starting the debate. There was a letter, wasn't there, to um, respond to the Pope, was it? Honorius or Gregory early on, from the abbot of Alcabasa, <coughs> asking not to be made to deal with, um, not to have legal commissions entrusted to him or his community. Yes, he, I don't know, because uh, you told me this yesterday and I have all my materials at home and I couldn't check my Gregory the Ninth materials. It's, uh, it's not in uh, Honorius the Third. I checked that, I could check that, it was in my computer. But it is probably uh, true, because they do disappear in a very... They do disappear in a very sharp uh, form. They reappear and that's why in the handouts I... I've made one of these uh, uh, graphics uh, analyzing the, 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 the letters of commission year by year. Uh, and they, when they reappear, it's in important cases. Uh, so you can connect the, the disappearance and reappearance with uh, their, uh, the, the cycles that their influence near the kings must have had too. But I think there was a tendency then perhaps the, the inclusion of super speculum here has something to do with it, to uh, turn down to um, agricultural and the uh, scriptorium uh, um, uh, activity, I don't know. The um, works, the legal works are quite uh, consistent and uh, the, we didn't uh, analyze it because it was beyond uh, the period we were analyzing, but there are liber extra, several, well, several, um, several copies uh, with uh, cut illumination. Someone took the illuminations home. And uh, there are, of course, Clementines, there are two or three, I think, two uh, sextus, 
three, three sectors. And so they were, um, I think they were worried uh, to have the right uh, uh, collection of uh, juridical books in their, um, uh, in their uh, original library. Um, how deeply they took their, um, their um, acting uh, from these inquiries and from the quantity of nominations. Of course, if, as the inquiries uh, sort of tell us, if they were involved uh, as partial judges on behalf of the bishop, which, again, it's not very logical, but that would take us a, a bit far uh, uh, once more. But if they were involved in the case of the bishop and against Santa Cruz, uh, then it's logical that uh, uh, we know that Pedro Suarez is in Rome during this period. We know that in the space of six months, poor Innocent III had to make issue, to have issued 26 letters just uh, at his request. So he was pestering the royal, the, the papal um, uh, chancery with requests one after the other. And it's consistent that they're always called in that uh, handout where, where I make allusion. You'll see that in between 1198, 1199, we have 14 times the same, uh, uh, the same or a similar group of men being called. And if they're not all from Alcobasa, they're packed with other Cistercians, which are either affiliated or included, Seysa and uh, uh, Salzedes. And then later on, they start being uh, called with other people, mainly with uh, 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 secular uh, canons. But in that particular moment in time, I think you can see that they were being used as uh, uh, political allies and um, manipulated <coughs> there. And then you have the king's intervention against the, the bishop of Toledo. So the, the reality is quite complex, and uh, you have to try and see how it works. And all of a sudden, they disappear. So perhaps that document which you mentioned um, has um, something to do with it. They just wanted to be freed of juridical doings. Perhaps they read, uh, they were read, uh, they, they also had... Uh, Did they have a copy of uh, Anthony's uh, sermons? They have many they sermons. Have pray, pray. Parce que euh, sur l'importance des manuscrits juridiques à Ottawa, c'est une chose très intéressante, c'est dans un autre manuscrit. Euh, euh, J'ai lu quand j'étudie le manuscrit des étymologies de Saint-Isidore et de Zélie, euh, que je pense que c'est un livre humain, le 9e livre, euh, qu'il y a la représentation dans la dans toi, qui est fait d'une manière très importante, euh, surtout qu'il paraît un impérateur. Et à cette époque-là, les arbres concernent cons l'imitate, euh, il n'y a pas beaucoup de manuscrits où il y a un roi euh, bon dans, dans, dans cette façon. Et j'écris à M. José Matos, à, à demander qu'est-ce qu'il pensait, parce que c'était curieux qu'un manuscrit comme ça, qu'on sait qu'il s'est euh, consulté comme livre juridique à cause de l'annulation des mariages, et, et qu'il pouvait être euh, consulté par euh, des juridiques, euh, pourquoi il y avait cette importance dans un manuscrit qui a qui n'avait pas, et dans un fond, on ne fait pas beaucoup de, de mieux comme ça. Euh, il m'a suggéré quelque chose d'intéressant, et c'est peut-être euh, Alphonse, euh, à, à, Alphonse euh, deuxième. Bon, deuxième, oui, et qui peut-être même le chancelier euh, Julien, euh, peut-être pouvait voir ce manuscrit. Si les dates sont avec coïncidence, euh, ces manuscrits pouvaient être consultés par des grands juridiques à, à cause de ça. Euh, et, et ça justifie, peut justifier l'importance qu'il donnait à, à, à un roi si important 
est fait d'une façon très byzantine, avec des euh, construits euh, euh, avec euh, une peinture qui n'est pas euh, très fréquente en Croatie, mais on sait que ce manuscrit c'est en Croatie. Et si on fait même, si on peut euh, comparer avec le manuscrit de saint croix c'est un manuscrit très simple, avec euh, des petits ornements, euh, et, euh, et qui copie un texte ibérique et puis, et puis on, on peut voir qu'il y a encore euh, de l'art du Xe siècle et pourquoi on va savoir euh, ce, roi, ce, ce roi si important et euh, qui avait une euh, comment on se dit qui avait une tradition des manuscrits du sud de d'Italie, euh, un peu avant du XIe siècle et du XIIe siècle. Euh, je ne sais pas. Euh, je, euh, <rire> euh, 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 le chancelier Julien est toujours présent dans ces cas que, dont je parle. Mm -hmm. Il euh, est même le conseiller du roi. Le roi, euh, dans, les, dans certains cas, on nous dit que le roi a demandé « qu'est-ce que je fais ?» et le chancelier lui dit « c'est meilleur de euh, trouver des garanties, qui serait une chose un peu du droit feudal. » Alors euh, c'est l'intromission de deux systèmes. Le chancelier lui dit « trouve douze hommes qui peuvent servir de garantie et des propriétés pour ce que tu vas faire. Euh, » Et donc je pense que le chancelier Sûrement, avec Alphonse Swann, vous ne voulez pas avoir des arbres euh, de consanguinité. Parce qu'il savait très bien ce qu'il pouvait et ne pouvait pas faire, et il faisait ce qu'il voulait parce que politiquement c'était mieux. Et après, quand on ça euh, euh, est très commun que les rois se marient dans des degrés de légitimité prohibés, interdite euh, et après euh, quand ils ont des enfants ils le font légitimer euh, ici dans la salle aussi euh, a vu tout ça et c'est très commun qu'ils euh, se marient dans des degrés qu'ils savent qu'il qu n'est pas euh, bien la raison d'avoir un roi euh, je pense qu'il y a autre cas où les arbres oui il y a d'autres cas mais ils sont, ils sont avec des voix, ils sont prêts surtout sur le XIIIe siècle, dans une période de centralisation euh, c'est fréquent, et il y a toujours le roi au centre. Euh, et, et même en 13 ou 14, au XIIe siècle, il y en a, et il y en a beaucoup. Et c'est une tradition qui vient de, 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 de l'Italie du Sud, euh, et qui s'est dans le sens plus intime, clairement. Intéressant. Et je ne dis pas peut-être ça de Julien, peut-être c'est une hypothèse, mais je pense que mon euh, l'importance que le moyen va pouvoir se donner au roi et en centralisation, c'est ce oui. peut-être euh, le livre des étymologies qui a des implications politiques. De oui. Moi je suis un peu euh, contre l'idée qu'il y a une centralisation avec la conscience. Je pense qu'il y a des tentatives oui, et des idées. Et oui. bien sûr, tous les rois, euh, dans ce moment, sont en train de faire ces procès de croissance de pouvoir. Oui. Si on peut parler de oui. centralisation, je pense que c'est un peu... Non, je dis au troisième siècle, oui, 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 oui. Oui. Mais, mais enfin, considérant oui. ça, oui, certainement, euh, tous euh, les, euh, euh, les monastères, tous les... Euh, tout le monde qui était ecclésiastique voulait avoir, euh, être de bien avec le roi. Alors ça, vraiment, euh, pourrait être une raison. L'autre raison, la théorique de euh, faire que le, la pyramide de la conservabilité se finisse dans le, le sommet, qui serait euh, le roi. As you, uh, as you presenting your paper, uh, we are facing, 
think, a special moment in the, the Alcobaça production and in the, in, the, in the capacity of link these nominations of the judge delegates with the production of Alcobaça. Well, I don't know if it is possible to answer now, but is this a specific case of Alcobaça or there is another monasteries, namely Santa Cruz, that perhaps even without so many judges delegation, delegators, uh, there are also a production and a special, a special production in these uh, juridical cases. <coughs> or the question is, if, if the Alcobasa is uh, yes, special, but is a special case or not? I think not. Uh, we have uh, the, the first judge delegate commission we have is 1180, so it's late. Uh, and uh, the preference for Cistercians is only, only visible now, because from now onwards the preference will be for not regular canons. Regular canons show up more as advocates than as judge delegates. Judge delegates come more after this period from the, uh, uh, the cathedral uh, church clergy, from the canons, from the bishops. And uh, that's what you notice, not from monasteries, but from uh, uh, city <coughs> If you ask me, Santa Cruz is fundamental. And the quantity of men from Santa Cruz that are representing cases, and uh, uh, not papal nominations of judge delegates or uh, executors, is considerably. You see them uh, 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 um, in indirect uh, uh, Notices and uh, the people that uh, the uh, and even if they are members of the cathedral churches, you we can see that they were uh, brought up in or um, um, uh, educated in Santa Cruz in many cases. So they were regular canons that then entered into the cathedral uh, church uh, hierarchies, and uh, uh, we find them in uh, many important uh, places. I think the Cistercian, this Cistercian moment, so to speak, is important because it is that point where, actually it's not just in Portugal, but they're being used um, as uh, very learned uh, people. And then, uh, uh, I don't know what, uh, I, I'm afraid I'm a bit skeptical on them having a big vocation to pray and that turning them into non-active um, protagonists, but uh, we know also is, uh, I, I was considering yes, just yesterday, I was thinking, there's also this attempt uh, which goes on to uh, match regular canons with uh, Cistercians of Alcobasa. The King Alfonso II tried to persuade regular canons to become Cistercians of, uh, uh, with, uh, together with the Alcobasa people. Yeah. They have since the time of uh, Teutonia, they have uh, uh, an agreement that they visit each other and they pray for each other in specific days. So there are uh, um, uh, bonds. I, we do not have any legal manuscripts in what's left of the, the, of the Santa Cruz. It's impossible that they didn't have. We have all these fragments that need to be identified still. And there is a lot more material that was totally uh, shattered, perhaps. The, when they became members of the uh, uh, um, secular clergy, they took some manuscripts with them and never came back with them. I don't, but I, I don't think the lack, uh, the, the lack of, evidence, of, of evidence of books means that they didn't happen at all. <coughs> Just as we don't know that uh, the documents we have are the ones that were, we have one. Well, on that, I think it's because the, the books are in Santa Cruz were a uh, personal object, more than in, in Alcobasa. They had a, 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 a holdings of uh, canon law books for the community and, and uh, the... Because they were among um, Exactly. And, and uh, in, in Santa Cruz they didn't um, uh, survive because they were personal books, <coughs> used in a, in a more personal way. And uh, granted to, to family members and so on. And like the Bas. So I think it's... Uh, why we don't have those manuscripts? What about the bibliographers that you want to say? Interesting. 
Well, I, I have uh, just uh, actually just uh, to to know your opinion about if what you present here does, doesn't show the the evolution of uh, Cistercian order uh, to um, to university studies, because uh, I always read that there was a, a change in the in the position of the order to, to uh, university study, studies. In the in the first period until the uh, the middle of the 13th century, the order was wasn't very keen on those studies. It wasn't very favorable to it. And from that mi that middle of the 13th century, they they go with the flow. What we're doing it uh, at uh, Barrett and everything, uh, and they founded the the college, the Cistician co uh, College around I think 1245. Uh, and here we, we have the news of the school of the fresh table and uh, I, and I'm thinking if what you present doesn't, doesn't constitute an example because what you produce here uh, I'm thinking more not in a, a something it, that it's uh, all the monastery they are fig figures they are persons uh, I'm not sure if, if this corresponds already a big interest uh, in study, university studies, uh, and the second part is already different. You see, these examples that they came after that second period, I think. Which example? Uh, the, the, this manuscript. The they are all after no, the middle of the... two of them are uh, from the... one is from the 12th and the other yes. two are from the early 13th, you think? And uh, uh, the other one is... Uh, the 3-8 one is the later one. Is the one. Yes. Okay, so the other ones are before. Isn't it the case that? Uh, no. But I'm not sure. I'm just asking. <laughs> no, just isn't it the case that Cistercians just uh, were recruiting their members from uh, older people, say, that they are not recruiting youngsters at okay. uh, the lower, le lower levels. They are recruiting people who may well be graduates. Okay. And this is certainly a pattern in other parts. Of the rest of the and it may well be that these people we have here uh, have uh, have been through the university. But not, but not at this stage. Not before, before. No. Okay. Who knows? I mean, they just names. But that, that at least that would be consistent with experience as well. Yes, and we do not know about that. It's the same thing with the uh, 144 that have the primitive collections, mm -hmm. with a huge quantity. Charles Durkin has analyzed that very well. He has a huge quantity of uh, the cripples of Alexander the Third to uh, English cathedral churches. And therefore, he thinks there's an English influence. Mm -hmm. And he thinks it was recopied re in Portugal because there's uh, one uh, bull of Alexander III in the King of Portugal. So, so he's they must have copied it here because it's in the middle of all the others. And there is some material usable for uh, the Cistercians in Portugal. Mm -hmm. uh, but it may very well be that it derives from uh, uh, just like <coughs> the, the life of uh, Thomas of uh, Canterbury has one of its early examples here sure. in the monastery of, um, of Alcabasa. Perhaps that uh, influx of people coming from, uh, namely from England, and uh, namely in staying over after the conquest of Lisbon and keeping bonds. That is, there are all possibilities, and um, so I think the influences might be multiple, not just from one place or another. And we always tend to think, mm -hmm. oh, they had French influence, they had South Southern Italy, they had uh, uh, English. You know, why, why couldn't it be influence from all those uh, environments? In fact, does the history of art then help us in that case, seeing that well, you you could establish that well, this is uh, was made in in Alcubasa. Yes, so there's there's did. some thing, some uh, distinctive uh, features. That's this what was possible to be done with all but the 144, mm -hmm. because although in some in one of them the 133, as uh, Rupert pointed out, the lettering of uh, some of the quaderni, the choirs, is different. Mm -hmm. the, the decoration is similar. So it could have been a double stage of composition. And then they're all packed together in different things with different vessels and different decorations. But they do all, except the 144, the one of the primitive collection, they do all have a distinctive mark of having been produced in the scriptorium of Alcabas. Exactly. So they, they agreed, I'm an ignorant of these things. And then uh, other But all those features, 
does they point out to, uh, to a foreign uh, influence or not? I, I, I don't, that's what I'm asking. So you want to, would you like to say it's a no, foreign influence? It's, 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 okay. <laughs> English influence in the case of the 144 and French influence in, in all the rest. <laughs> that's right. You, you were saying chair tries is being made at Altubasa, so these features uh, uh, are Altubasian uh, based, yeah. but they are, they suffer certain influence from the uh, Yes. No, no, no. Production of uh, um, home production. I got it. But the influence of their home production came, came from where? That's why I'm asking. Yes. Friends? Okay. Uh, it's a question for the art historians how it's said how it's said to be lost in the world. I've noticed that in the first uh, manuscript you showed, uh, we see the letter C, I think. Uh, and I've noticed that it has some sort of irregular uh, colored background. And I was wondering if you have an answer for that, uh, the previous one. That, yeah. well, that's exactly. very typical of, of, of Santa Cruz as well. It's a, it's yeah. a very um, okay. Roman. Yes, uh, and we have that in work as well. Yeah, it's very, it's very odd. It, it, it's, a, it's a type of, of decoration that um, some manuscripts produced in Alcabasta present, different from, from the ones that uh, Alessandra has studied. But it, it's more, it's more arc, um, archaic. Yes. It's it's not, uh, on my point of view. Yes, it would be more Hispanic, I would say, probably. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, but, but, but the person really advised not everything. Because Santa Cruz has lots of this, this kind of, of, of capitulars. Je pense que ces lettres, elles sont très fréquentes en Cubasse et il y a une façon en Cubassien de voir les modèles de Clairvaux. À cette époque-là, c'est quelque chose qui vient de la Bourgogne avec de Clairvaux en Cubassien. Ça se répond. Et je pense que ça, comme ça, ça va dans Cubasse, ça se touche et ça revient. So it's not a question of um, an articulation between the scribe and the illustrator. That's what it is. Uh, I just wondering if that irregular structure could be a symptom of that or not. Oh, it, it has not, well, it, it, it has something to do with the with the with the seat, with the with the, mm. the format. Yes. As you yes. can see, it, it um, almost frames, frames the structures of the letter. So it's in a very um, compartmentalized way, okay. very odd structure. I just have a question. Uh, are those cases of the message that monks that were recruited um, uh, documented after uh, they had been in the Paris University? Are those cases of the message? Do you have any no, no, cases no. that you and, uh, and, uh, are sure uh, they wouldn't have gone to Paris anyway? Not at this time. Not for this purpose. I think juridical training was not in Paris. <coughs> uh, if you wanted to be a jurist, you would go somewhere. Yes. <laughs> but there, but the south of France, but, and then yes. later on to it. Uh, but Alpha does recruit monks that are adults. That, yes. Do yes. you have that documented for the third <coughs> century? They can go to the college. They show up. Well, I mean, that was what Lacazette had to go to the square, the clerk who wrote about that. And uh, it would be reasonable to assume something, so I don't think there's any evidence. No, there is no evidence. When they show up, they're already there. They don't no. tell us this, this, uh, this, uh, we, uh, I wish. They tell us, uh, he just came into the monastery, just arrived from, sometimes in the inquiry, he said, well, he was out three years studying in Bologna, but that's a bit mm -hmm. of this. Uh, so I think, by the by the hour now. Yeah.
some appetite grows, grows as from us uh, talking about this uh, about this subject. Sorry, I couldn't get a better, a better transition. So. Uh,